it was more like the emotional stuff that was scary. But when I left the movie after watching it, I definitely did feel a little bit like tweaked by people smiling. It does give a very eerie feeling watching it and leaving and yeah. Um, throughout the film, you're obviously um, around so many of the creepy smiles. I was wondering if it's as scary on set as it is for us viewers when you were filming them. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> no, you've got, you know, I mean, you know, you've got like a million people around and like um, there were funny things mm -hmm. throughout. I don't think that it was much. Yeah, like I think that it was also... It, what was most fun to me is like to see what every actor did with the smile and um, how they were all different, you know? Robin Weigert, like, she is like a theater actor and she like did so much prep. Like, she was, like, she, it was amazing. I, and then like, you know, every everybody approached it differently and they all turned out amazing. It told me that today's the day that I'm, I'm gonna... Do you see it right now here? There are so many amazing scares in this movie. I was wondering if there was one particular that was really challenging for you to shoot. You know, they all of the scares in the film were definitely, you know, bespoke and 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 logistical challenges for every single one of them. And I wanted to make sure that we weren't just scaring people the same way over and over again, that there was a sort of an escalation to the scares and um, an unexpected nature to them. Uh, certainly, uh, you know, the birthday party scene was a uh, major logistical challenge with the extras and, and so many children around and also um, what Sosi uh, had to do in the middle of all of that. And um, I really, really love the way that came together. And, you know, we just premiered the movie the other night and to, to hear an audience um, react to that scene was really, really fun. Why is it that everybody else who's seen it is dead in your life? I've seen it too. You. Get away from me! I feel like there was a great conversation to be had about mental health and, and trauma and how it plays a part in people's lives. I was wondering if you could speak to that element of the movie and your inspirations for the concept. I was really interested in kind of investigating the, the sort of the stuff that we're all carrying around inside of our heads, you know, whether it's it's our fears, anxieties, traumas, um, and, and what we do to try to mask that from the world. Um, and then at the same time, I wanted to explore uh, and, and really place the, the audience in the, in the shoes of a character who feels like their mind is turning against them and, and what that might be like to experience and, and sort of present that in a way that, that audiences may not have thought of before. And I really wanted to you know, do something so like internal and psychological, but also bring in these external extraordinary elements and kind of weave them together till they're, they're indistinguishable. Something that I, I heard that kind of stuck with me forever is that no one is born bad. And that kind of ties into all of these things that happen to us throughout our lives, whether it's traumatic or whether it's something, you know, um, medically that, that then affects us and it changes who we are and, and the way that we see the world. And I, I felt like just even incorporating that aspect into this movie and then tying it to like a horror genre says a lot, you know what I mean? It is, it can be horrific. And um, a lot of times we, we're not really sure if it's a supernatural thing or if it's a mental illness or if, you know, if it's a traumatic experience that this person keeps reliving, but it all sort of seems to have the same uh, reaction and, or at least it can, you know, it, it can have the same reaction and that's pretty freaking scary. <laughs> I am not gonna keep running. I have to face it. How does it make you feel? I have come across recently the cool marketing campaign at games and other televised events. <laughs> and I was wondering how much of a hand you had in that and if you came up with the concept at all. Paramount's marketing team has been nothing short of spectacular on this film. Um, and I gotta give all the credit to them. I mean, they, I think they got very inspired by the film and came up with these really clever ideas. And I, I've, I've loved watching it all go out and sort of uh, infect the world. For you, Kyle, um, if do you mind talking spoilers? I'll I'll tell you the whole plot of the movie right now. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I mean, look, I love a brutal ending. I love like a mean ending. I love like it's something not wrapped up in a nice little bow. And and I'm hoping it's a one-two punch, you know, being like, oh shit. Yeah. And then you're like, oh no. <laughs> you know, like I hope, I hope. I love that. Part. I hope it really like makes everybody walk away and kind of be like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, really, I hope it's a gut punch for everybody. You know, I don't love it when like an ending is tied up with a neat bow. I like messy endings that, you know, can be, you know, like deliver deliver an emotional catharsis, but also be ambiguous that, that you know, and then potentially uh, uh, sort of, you know, pull the rug out from underneath you. Um, you know, I, I think I, the, the, the intention with the film was to tell a, a self-contained story. I think there could still be a lot of fun stuff to do with Smile, but if there was any story that was gonna continue, I'd wanna make sure that it's not a retread of what we already watched, that it's uh, something new and that it would have more surprises in store for the audience. I'm just really scared that something bad is going to happen.